I realize it's a big opportunity, you know, uh, basketball and, 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 and sports in, in China or financial services, finally being able to own your own company in China. But do you give up all your values? Do you allow and stand there as China rounds up upwards of two million Uyghurs, putting them in concentration camps? Do you shut your eyes just to get the money? Yeah, I mean, you think about it and you look back to what Hitler said in Germany. Uh, you know, China's saying the same thing. He said, don't worry about the Jews, but it's less than 1% of our population. And China said, don't worry about the Uyghurs. We've got less than 1% of our population in these, in these re-education concentration camps where they're harvesting their organs, uh, you know, on a daily basis. I mean, the same kinds of things are going on in China. And then you have, you know, so social justice warriors like LeBron who wear shirts that say, hashtag, I can't breathe. I think he should change his shirt. It should, hash, it should say, hashtag, I can't speak. Because when you get into money, uh, money ends up uh, muddying the waters and, and changes all your values. And I think that it's ugly. What's going on right now is very ugly in our country. And at some point in time, we're going to realize that we shouldn't be engaging with China. Uh, we should be forcing our value system on theirs or uh, or we should just disengage with them and let them go on in the world without us. Yeah, I mean, let me, and look, Xi Jinping is not trying to make believe he's somebody he's not. He was very clear when he spoke with the prime minister of Nepal, right? And he said, look, anybody yeah. who tries to, you know, divide or split up China is going to, quote, end up with crushed bodies and shattered bones. The bones will yeah. go into powder. I mean, this from the president of China. That really struck me. Yeah. It struck me, too. And, Maria, I don't know if you watched some of the video from this weekend in Hong Kong, but, uh, you know, Xi's worst nightmare is Hong Kong because there's so many smartphones, there's so many videos. He can't come in and engage in another Tiananmen Square massacre because it will be videoed for the world to see. Mm. And his propaganda outlets in the U.S., the China Daily, the Global Times, they won't be able to talk their way out of these videos. So uh, you saw over the weekend that the Hong Kong police started throwing flashbang grenades at the press. They'd love for the press to leave so that they could come in and crush the bones uh, of the protesters. So, right. uh, you know, we'll see what happens going forward. But, but I think, you know, with, with this talk of Carrie Lam being replaced, I mean, Maria, if you're Carrie Lam, you turned your back on your own people uh, in, in, to favor Beijing, and you turned your own police against your people and brutalized them, you are a failed leader. You're not even a lame duck. You, you literally have no power whatsoever in Hong Kong. And now whoever China replaces Carrie Lam with will probably be an even, even worse hardliner. So for those that have hope that universal suffrage will uh, magically appear in Hong Kong, you know, I have bad news for them. Uh, the next person that comes along will be another Xi Jinping lackey, and they'll do whatever he wants them to do. Right. And, and by the way, you know, now we know that she was never really uh, autonomous. She never really had the authority no. uh, to run Hong Kong. And then you've got people like the CEO of Disney, Bob Iger, saying he won't say anything about the Hong Kong protest because it could be bad for business. Disney has had a huge yeah. and growing consumer base in China, obviously. What, I mean, you know, so he, there you go, rolling over once again. What's your best advice? for this administration that's trying to do a deal with China uh, in the face of China basically calling the shots, say, yeah, we'll buy more agriculture, but we're not making a move on intellectual property. We're not making a move on the way we govern our people and, you know, the, the, the censoring of, of, of everybody and the tracking of citizens. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, any crackerjack president can get the Chinese to buy soybeans and pork. They're in a desperate shortage of pork and soybeans are fungible. I mean, it doesn't take it doesn't take a genius to get that done. I think as part of the skinny deal, one of the one of the three things that's that's a key part of the deal is letting Huawei sell more things in the U.S. that aren't deemed to be uh, critical to national security. And look, Huawei is the global cancer to Western democracy. And I think that uh, we can't allow Huawei or ZTE uh, to, to generate back doors for all the data in the United States. So I don't think that we should uh, be re engaging with China until they agree to stop stealing from us, uh, to stop the cyber war, to stop pushing their propaganda in the United States through their newspapers. There's so many things that just have to stop. But the only thing that's allowing all of those things to move forward today and for Trump to want a deal 
is uh, short-termism and uh, looking for profits. And yeah. at some point in time, we're going to realize that our national security is actually more important than uh, another billionaire making another shekel. Re really well said, Kyle. Very quickly before you go, you're still allocating capital in the U.S. How do you want to be invested right here? Yeah, I think, look, I think, Maria, I think we're going to have a, a slight recession in 2020. I think when you look at an industrial production in many of the larger countries around the world, they're all, uh, let's say, below uh, the growth. They're, they're below the zero line. And so I think you're seeing things pretty dramatically slow down. You see Caterpillar's numbers today. Uh, I think as we get into next year, China's printing the, the slowest numbers they've printed in the last 35 years. Europe, uh, Europe's IP numbers across the board are really uh, not looking so good. Right. And I think in the U.S., th there's no way for the U.S. to grow if everybody else is slowing down so, so quickly. So I think we'll have, a, we'll have a short recession. I actually don't know if uh, stocks will go down in a recession. I think U.S. rates will hit zero pretty quickly, though. Wow, rates at zero. <laughs> Jeez, unbelievable where rates are. Kyle, it's great to see you this morning, as always. Thanks for joining me. Great talking with you. And to you, Kyle Bass, joining us there.